Hey everyone, I just want to go over a couple uh, pretty easy ways to just set up a unit and then a lesson within the unit on Canvas. Um, so this is especially for those of you guys who are getting started with trying to uh, do some sort of online learning with your students. Um, this is a way you can set up a lesson, have your information in there, and then just have some students answer some simple multiple choice questions to just kind of show uh, their understanding of the content. All right, so your first thing you do is make sure you are in Canvas. Um, you can head over to whichever class it is that you want to set up your lesson in. Uh, I'm going to do it here. Uh, you can see I already have uh, the units that we had started uh, so far this semester. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize those right now. Um, if you're just getting started new or you want to start a new unit fresh, uh, first thing you want to do is let's click on plus module up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and name this. I'm going to name this a unit for me. It's our third unit of this semester. Um, and momentum and impulse. Let's make it clear to students um, the context of this unit. All right, uh, if I wanted to, I could add some prerequisites from our previous units, but I'm not going to do that right now. I could uh, have it open on a certain date by clicking on lock until, uh, but again, I want this to be open to students now. Go ahead and add my module. This should actually be unit two. Sorry, if you need to rename them for whatever reason, if you click on these three dots on the side, go edit. Go ahead and fix that real quick. All right, now unit two. Uh, a couple things to notice uh, right now students cannot see this unit uh, because currently uh, it is unpublished if i am completely ready for them to see it i'll click on this and they will now have access to it but we're not ready yet so i'm going to leave that on unpublished all right my first step is i want to create an assignment that can go into here um, now you have to kind of debate about what, how you want to set up your lesson. If you want students to turn in something specifically, like turn in a Word doc, turn in a PowerPoint, uh, turn in just a text entry, right? You can set up a assignment. Um, but if you want to have just a simple lesson that students can do on their own, um, that just ends with them answering some multiple choice questions or just some, you know, simple objective uh, questions, uh, you may actually want to set it up as a quiz. Now, we go here and click on quizzes on the side. Um, now, with quizzes, uh, most people will think that a quiz is, you know, just like a short test that students can take. But there's actually a few more ways that you can use this option to make it a little more versatile. So we start by clicking on add quiz. Uh, it does give you two options. We have classic quizzes, which I highly suggest if you're just getting started. There's also new quizzes. The main difference between the two is new quizzes gives you some more uh, question options, like different types of questions that you can ask. Um, it's definitely worth playing around with, but if you just want to have a simple like five, 10 multiple choice questions for students, uh, I would just stick with the classic quizzes. Okay. Now here. I'm just going to title it intro to momentum. Now, whether you're creating an assignment or you're creating a quiz, you have this instructions area. Now, this instructions area um, just looks like kind of a blank canvas, um, but is highly versatile. Now, you have many different ways that you can deliver content to your students. Uh, one, uh, if you record a video like I'm doing right now, you can insert a YouTube video of what it is that you're saying. It could be a YouTube video that's already been created um, that you want students to watch and then answer some questions about. All right. So if you want to do that, you can click on this YouTube button. Um, you can go ahead and search for it in here. That's one way to do it. Um, in our way, right, if it's an online resource, you can simply just link to it. So if I have a specific uh, URL to a YouTube site, I can just paste it in here. 
Um, but there's a few more ways that we can uh, really make good use of this space. Um, if you want to keep it super simple, you can do something as easy as uh, read the following article and answer the multiple choice questions below. Okay. So let's say you just want to keep it simple. Read the article, answer the questions below. Um, let's say you find a article that you know has all the teaching that you want, has some activities, what have you. Um, I can go ahead and copy this link. Okay, so highlight it, Control C, go over here. Uh, a couple of things I can do, I can just paste it in. Um, for those of you guys who don't like you know, seeing this big mess right here, what you can do instead of uh, just pasting a whole link, uh, you can highlight a certain area and say, I want my students to read the following article. So I'm going to highlight article. We go over to link. I'm going to paste my link in, insert there. <clears throat> and you can see now that the word article is a clickable link. Okay. Uh, a couple other things that you guys can do in the space. You can um, just insert a file. You know, the file could be a Word doc, could be a reading, could be a PowerPoint, what have you. I'll make another video about how to actually embed a uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides into here. Um, that's kind of a separate video. Um, but again, just to kind of keep it simple, if you just want students to go to a link, to watch a video, to read an article, you just type it out and then insert the link. Um, now, down below, we can set up some questions for them, you know, based on the article or video or PowerPoint, whatever it is. Um, and creating your questions is super simple. Right? Uh, it does have you title each question. So I usually just number them out. Question one, question two, et cetera. Um, you have several options here. Uh, I typically stick with multiple choice. We also true false, fill in the blanks, um, multiple answers, et cetera. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's say we're creating our question. Um, it's, it's the formula for momentum. Uh, have our potential answers. B equals B. B. PM. <clears throat> right. Again, I can go ahead and click on whichever answer is correct. Again, the correct answer is the one that has the green arrow next to it. Uh, if I have too many answers, I can just get rid of one of them. Uh, I can always add another answer in addition. Uh, when I'm done, I want to make sure I click on update question. If I make any changes to that, um, I just want to make sure I Go back and click on update question. All right, you can obviously make several other ones. Um, again, going back to details over here. If I wanted to, I could make sure that all the answers are shuffled. I could give it a time limit. I could allow for multiple attempts, which I usually do, uh, especially in this case. You know, if a student gets their first score and it's pretty terrible, you can allow for more attempts. Um, you can set a specific amount. Um, again, students can probably figure it out at a certain point. Uh, here, you can also see uh, whether or not you want your students to um, see the correct answers. So you could set a specific date for that. You can kind of keep it blank, so they have to keep kind of working at it until they get enough of the questions correct. Um, Again, just a few more things in here you can add as well. Also, some due dates available until, from, etc. cetera. Um, the access code, that's if you wanted to make this, you know, more restricted. You know, students would have to have a certain password to get in. Um, again, in this particular case, I suggest you do not have that. All right. So let's say you have your uh, links in here, your content. Uh, you already set up your questions. You're all good. You just make sure you save and publish. Okay. We have our quiz created. 
Um, again, it's not an actual quiz. It's really just some content with some formative questions that follow it. All right, I wanna make sure I get that into my new unit. Uh, I'm back on my homepage. I see my unit two, momentum and impulse. I'm gonna go ahead and click the addition. Um, now I created a quiz, so I wanna make sure that when I'm adding, I'm looking under my quizzes, intro momentum. Again, I would like to indent one level just for organizational purposes, um, right? And I make sure I publish this unit so that students can see it. Um, as soon as they see it, right, what I might do next is send out an email, just letting them know, like, hey, um, here's today's assignment. Uh, make sure you guys get it done by X time. Um, so that's it. Uh, really, if you set up the correct answers, um, they'll be able to see if they got their answers correct. If not, they can kind of go back, look at the content, um, and try again until they get it correct. All right. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment or email.